evening, gentle friends. Is this thing on? I don't know. I can't tell. Words escape me. Ah. Well, I really should have checked what the name of the opposing team is. I'll find that out. What's the name? Don't worry, we'll fix this in post. <laughs> I forgot to actually have to do things. A swan nonsense. Excellent. Okay, after that brief short hiccup there, please join me this evening to enjoy the X to X team taking on the Swan Ronsons from Swansea. Uh, the X to X team, of course, being from Exeter, in case you couldn't tell. Picks coming in quickly. Tamahala picking up that vein as a first pick and being counteracted by a thing called Love picking up Talon and Rich Teabaggins. Pick up Elise in the jungle. An interesting mid choice. I have to admit, I'm not too sure what Talon's going to be particularly good against, but we'll have to see what the Exeter team chooses to pick up. Leona being picked up as a support. So the entirety of the Exeter X team, bottom lane, already taken out, and Elise is going to be matching up against Lee Sin in the jungle. I don't know if these guys have chosen to, pick, uh, to be in an order which reflects their position. But I guess we'll find out. Interesting. Well, let's have a look at already what we've got here. So some potential for the Swan Ronsons to lock down an individual target and absolutely murder them with the Cocoon into Talon's huge, huge amounts of damage. It certainly would make sense for a potential Thresh pickup and, and it's always an unwise thing to do. Uh, to comment on the the ash could but again potentially be a nice pick tool for the swan ronsons and it does seem to be the case as it gets locked in for a grizzled fart what a, an amazing name that player has all right so there we go it looks like we've got some good potential here for the swan ronsons to try and catch a member of the x team off guard and murder them with reckless abandon we'll have to see what the final pickups here will be for the x team try and counteract that and interesting. Uh, Kale being picked up presumably as a mid laner. It's going to be able to counteract a lot of that pick potential coming out from the Swan Ronsons. And if the final pick does end up being Mundo, who he seems to be very, very strong at the moment, imagine to slip through unawares through the pick and man phase. A nice counteraction to the potential for the Swan Ronsons to catch him off, because if that person's Mundo, he probably isn't going to care overly much. Still, if that does get locked in, we'll have to look and see what the Swan Ronsons pick up as their final pick, being presumably their top laner. Is there anyone who can counteract Mundo? Well, we'll have to see what the Swan Ronsons bring to the table. They could double down on their catch potential, but they're going to have to try and thread it somehow past Mundo, which is not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, let me just fiddle some things around here. Let's see, yep. Okay, and Nar being hovered for Jigrid? Jigrid? I think that's I think that's his name. Jigrid? Let's go with that. Uh, Nar, certainly a sensible pickup if they do decide to go with that. Still plays into their plans of grabbing someone unawares and murdering them thoroughly, but does he does have a, you know, something of an inherent advantage over Dr. Mund in the top lane on that Nar with the ranged advantage. So maybe, just maybe, he'll be able to poke him down over time. Though, on the you know, on the same thread of thought, maybe he wouldn't. And excellently demonstrating why you shouldn't really comment on picks until they are locked in, as they are now. Okay, so we'll have to see how Jagred goes up against whoever the top laner is on the X team, which is a little hard to tell at this point. We'll, I imagine we're going to see some swaps around. Oh, but I say this, perhaps not. I'd be very interested to see if Dreadon does leave that exhaust on his 
Kale pickup. It's an interesting choice to try, again, as another another avenue to counteract the potential aggression coming out from the Swan Ronsons. We'll have to see if that stays in, if that perhaps gets changed up to something like Ignite or Barrier for uh, some more, a more potential defensive option, but certainly when dueling, Exhaust can be very, very harsh on the fellow mid laner, especially one who's relying so much on Burst, like Talon. We'll see only 10 more seconds until these guys have their final decisions locked in and they are forced to keep hold of whatever it is they've chosen that's summoner spell-wise. It looks like no need of these teams chose to be in the correct positions to make my life easier, so I'll just have to cry about it for a bit. I guess, eh, what can you do? Alright, well it does look like Draydon has left that exhaust chosen as the final, his final selection. Skiller in the top lane as Mundo is going to be matching up against Jigred, who um, we're actually seeing a the disparity as far as teleports go, with the nerf in the recent season to teleport, meaning it's le a lot less of an essential option, but Ignite very, very aggressive for Skiller, though to be fair, I'm not really sure what else he would have taken if he wasn't taking teleport, but presumably that does speak to some sort of desire on the part of Skiller to get some early kills off on Jigred, or at least at least discourage all in aggression by being able to counteract that with an extra bit of true damage coming through. I don't know if we'll be seeing any particular item choices uh, to counteract Mundo. I don't believe that Ash is the best choice, uh, sorry, is the most effective at dealing with Mundo, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Certainly, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. One of the last Whisper upgrades allows, well, potentially will allow Grizzly, Grizzly Fart, uh, man, uh, Grizzly Fart to be able to deal a little bit more effectively with Mondo. But as to whether or not they pick up, it's probably going to be a fairly late game purchase. So I think for a while, even though Mondo himself takes a while to get going, once again, once he reaches that point, I think he's going to be a real issue for the Swan Ronsons. But we'll have to see. There's a lot of interesting potential. I don't know if we're going to see too much aggression from either team level 1, since, to be honest, I don't see Rich T. Baggins, at least, picking up the Cocoon at the first level, because that's going to be so detrimental to the jungle clear. Unless they can guarantee a kill, it's going to be otherwise... I don't, it doesn't feel like an enormous amount of potential for level 1 murdering, really, from either team. So, well, no, we'll see. We'll see how that one pans out. Okay, it's only going to be another, about another 30 seconds before the game starts itself. Um, I'll eventually just run out of things to ramble about, but eh, who knows. Alright, so let's have a quick run through of who's in what lane. Skiller up in the top lane on Dr. Mundo for the X team. In the jungle, Fizze on Shin Zhao. In the middle lane, Dreadon on Kale, and the bottom lane, Tamahala and Bacon and Asians on Vayne and Leona, respectively. And we're going to run out of time before I get to go through the Swan Ronsons, but just to start, uh, Jigged is on Nar up in the top lane, Rich T. Baggins on Elise in the jungle, a thing called Love on Talon in the mid lane, and let's just switch scenes to try and keep up with things. as it loads into the game properly. There we go. Right, so just to continue, so Continuing on the thread from before, Rich T Baggins on Blood Moon Elise in the middle, uh, sorry, in the jungle. I think we'll love on talent in the middle lane. Uh, Grizzly Far and SQL Squiffy. I wanted to call him Sergeant Squiffy, so I'm probably going to keep calling him Sergeant Squiffy. Grizzly Far and Sergeant Squiffy down the bottom lane on Ash and on Thresh. So, as to how, these, how this game's going to play out, looking at the teams. I feel a little bit like the X team have chosen chosen wisely. 
I've chosen some good pickups to counteract what looks to be the primary Swan Ronson strategy of find a guy, lock him down, murder him with that KL. Uh, wait, let me rephrase, sorry. The KL pickup counteracts that strategy pretty well. So we'll have to see. Of course, Dreadon can't be everywhere at once, can't really inter use the intervention on, in every, necessarily every fight. So we'll have to see. I'd imagine, I would imagine, that Swan Ronsons probably want to try and keep the X team from having those big team fights which are going to be able to take advantage of their, I would say, probably larger sustained damage. More like sand paws. I don't even understand what that means. But please, feel more than free to spam the Twitch chat with anything you like. Because otherwise, I'll get, I'll get bored and start going crazy. Let's see, what is... Oh. I just realised there's an event title. I actually need to change this one. Uh, oh, actually, no. No, that's fine. I see. A little bit of a... <laughs> That's right, welcome to the stream, dear players. I see what the, the problem is. That we're having some connection issues for one of the players. And hopefully they'll be back on very soon. While we wait, there isn't unfortunately too much to talk about as far as item choices being that only two members of any team have both items. <laughs> Jigred doing his best to educate the masses about what happens when a Gnar goes into Mega Gnar form. Uh, Jigred truly is only second to Kobe in his ability to educate. Oh. The plot thickens, ladies and gentle beans, as song lyrics get deployed with reckless abandon. Who knows what's next? I can only assume nonsense. I am curious to know well yes, at some point turn off the chat. Because it's full of nonsense and obviously for posterity, we can't have that there. Unfortunately, unfortunately I think I left the swearing filter on, so any of you of any gentle readers, listeners, viewers, that's the word, any viewers of a gentle disposition will not have to be too traumatized by the terrible filth that passes between these teams, which I'm I'm sure is entirely unjust, and not because they have a burning personal hatred for each other, which transcend uh, generations. <laughs> yes, the in-game chat in this game is more like the Twitch chat out of game. Squadron leader. I've, I, I don't even, I don't even know what these, what are these may mays you're deploying? It's all very upsetting. Well, we are, as I'm sure you're very aware. Gentle viewers, coming up to the third minute of pause time, I do apologize. It's not because I DDoS one of the players as much as that might be the case, but just because things really happening. That's always upsetting. Well, at least if nothing else, it's giving these two teams a chance to to bond in their love of talking complete nonsense. Uh, and they seem to be taking advantage of that with some quite you know, wild abandon. Perhaps Swansea and Exeter will no longer be bitter and hateful rivals that they once were. Possibly. <laughs> Wait, no. No, no. There is to be no friendship between these people. The these slightly racialist jokes, jokes are coming out, and 
Yes, Rich T. Baggins realises that all of this will be recorded and put into his university file. Evidently, the only recourse is, of course, to start deploying memes. <laughs> start deploying them as fast as possible, thereby shrinking yourself into the background, making sure that no one can tell who you are or what you're doing. Coming up to five minutes of pause time, my FPS seems to be maintaining its stable at 60, so that is good news. Uh, no ping, because this is not a actual live live game. I'm swiftly running out of things to say. Anywho, I suppose I might as well talk about League of Legends at some point. So let's have a group of the matchups. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Grizzly Fart. I enjoy saying your name as well. I don't know anything about you personally. Uh, so Jigred up in the top lane against Skiller. As we talked about before, Teleport against Ignite. Mundo against Narn. Jigred will have the ranged advantage. Even though Mundo can throw his cleavers, it's relatively straightforward for Jigred to stay at a safe enough range, not being a melee for most of the time at least. Not being a melee. So isn't going to be in too much danger of getting clobbered with a cleaver. So if I was to arbitrarily assign the winner of the game already, I'd have to say that Jigred has a small match in his favour. Uh, it's the jungle then. Fizze on Shin Zhao against Rich T. Baggins on Lee's. If these guys run into each other, it's a little hard to say who's going to win. I'd imagine if Fizze runs right into a cocoon, it's I can't see it ending well for him, but if he does manage to evade it, who knows? Rich T. Baggins has a lot of mo a lot of maneuverability with a repel, able to get himself out of danger if he does find that he gets into trouble. So we'll see. I think Fizzy could potentially be at a small disadvantage in that if Rich T. Baggins plays cleverly enough, then I would. Give it a slight in the favour of Rich T. Baggins, because they don't have to physically get into contact. It's going to defend as well as how good they are at hitting those cocoons. In the middle lane, Dreadon on Kale against a thing called Love on Talon. I think... I would tend to favour... Uh, oh man, I didn't even notice in the Twitch chat people are actually saying things now. Sam? Who's Sam? <laughs> I could. I don't know if Sam is, Sam is all of your mothers at the same time. Hmm. How troubling. Anywho, yes, in the middle lane, Dreadon against the thing called Love. I think, and I could be wrong, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt, but I think with Dreadon being a relatively short ranged uh, caster, while even while using uh, his empowered auto attacks, which give him range, or give her range, uh, it's going to mean that Drenon's going to spend quite a lot of time in a thing called Love's danger zone. Potential to get raked there repeatedly. So, I would very marginally, early on, give it over to a thing called Love, over Drenon in the middle lane, just because Drenon is forced into Talon's effective range. Or at least cl a lot closer to it than a lot of other uh, casters would be. I. I don't understand this high Sam may may. Uh, <laughs> Rich T. Baggins. Always looking out for other people. Whatever. Anywho. In the, the bottom lane, we have Tamahala and Bacon Agents, Vayne and Leona, respectively, giving them a lot of potential late game power with the Vayne and a lot of engage with Bacon Agents on Leona. Going up against Grizzly Farm, who has a lot of kite and you know a degree of engage with that enchanted crystal arrow. And Sergeant Scriffy, I'm going to still call him Sergeant Scriffy because it's much more reason to be the SQL Scriffy. A Sergeant Scriffy on Thresh, and kind of similarly, a little bit more flexibility on Thresh. Oh, excellent news! Jigred has some chicken wings. I hope he brought enough to share. Uh, hmm. Anywho, 
Yes. Uh, so, as to how that match is going to play out, I think I would favour Swansons. Swanson Ronsons. Oh no, I've forgotten their names. The Swan Ronsons down the bottom lane, just because she's threshing the owner kind of sort of in the same ballpark, but a little bit more flexibility on the part of Thresh, and it's going to be able to use that flay to counteract a lot of Bacon and Ancient's aggression. I suppose, that on balance, uh, at least early on, I would probably give it to the Swan Ronsons. They seem to have some slight advantages, but hey, we'll have to see how that actually plays out in practice. Because a good excuse which everyone always uses is to say it's a skill matchup, which means I don't know who's going to win, but uh, probably the better player, which is usually the case. Because, I mean, well, it kind of goes without saying, but even if you're at disadvantage in a particular lane matchup, there's no reason why you have to die for it, you can just lose some CS instead. As to where we might see the junglers heading early on. It's tough to say. I think we might see some visits into the top lane from uh, probably more likely to see the, the Ron Swanson's jungler Rich T. Baggins in the top lane just because it's so, so hard to nail that G grid. And keep him from just hopping away whenever a gank comes in. So, not ideal. <laughs> Some questions are being brought up as to what happens if the timer runs out. Uh, if it's a tool similar to other tournaments, usually both teams get 15 minutes of pause time. At which point, I think either the game, well, depending on the tournament, the, the game either just ends or they just carry on. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the new rules are. I'd have to be far more prepared to actually understand what rules of anything were. Actually, after all this time, I'm not even sure who is the culprit of this pause. Okay. Apparently, Dreadon is more informed about this. Yes. <laughs> Eratop, this is in fact the most entertaining game. Ever! 15 minutes is quite a long time for a person to be unable to connect. Usually that's, for most people, that's going to be enough time to completely restart your computer and restart the router. Oh, well, Jack Minak seemed, that's an interesting theory. Grizzly Fight will forget he's playing Ash and think he's playing Jinx. It happens all the time in our games. I guess the question is then, what kind of... Okay, looks like... <laughs> uh, looks like we're going to have to do a quick remake. Uh, I do apologise, gentle viewers. But it looks like the Swansea team are at least kind-hearted enough to not press the issue. But hopefully, we should be able to get back into things pretty quickly. Looks like we're seeing a relog from Dreadon, as you can tell from the bottom of my screen, that he's all greyed out with nowhere to go. But hopefully we'll be back into the game. Champion Slate should be going past pretty darn fast given that everyone knows what they're actually going to be picking this time. Hmm, Aerotop says, give him Jinx and you might as well make him B-A-N. All these abbreviations, I don't understand what they mean. B A N. Don't look at that. Uh, 
I'd imagine by the time this goes out, of course that coordinate code won't be useful for anything. Uh, so I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, I don't actually go to university myself, but I do hang around Exeter University because I live in Exeter myself. And so I've had the dubious pleasure of meeting some of these ex team chaps in person and being duly horrified by their play previously. Alright, well, thanks for sticking with the plan, the team so far. And we're back into Champion Select itself. Well, Jack Minak, to be honest, I am. It would amuse me just as much to see. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah. It would amuse me just as much to see the X team crushed as succeed. Uh, I'm really just. I just enjoy watching them play. Everyone seems to be pretty, pretty relaxed about the whole affair, which is good, which is nice, as long as it doesn't end up running too heavily into the next round play. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, if we be back in with the same picks, same bands, and we have to get through the chamber select very, very quickly. Ah, oh, thanks, Jack. Well, no, that's a kind of thing for you to say. I think I talk in a bit of a different voice when I'm doing casting than when I'm talking normally. Not consciously? But it just kind of happens. Sadly, it looks like nobody took the opportunity to spell anything out with their bands that I that I noticed at least. But we're getting through those pigs and bands pretty quickly. Already locked in. Is Swan Ronson's showing their class by picking LTS style. They're going to be in all order. <laughs> Skiller, Skiller, what are you doing? Skiller, trolling a little bit. The small, small heart attacks, which really makes this 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 profession worthwhile. Uh, so yes, mad, mad credit to Son Ronsons for picking an order which is going to make life easier. But X team, they don't live by nobody's rules. They just they go what they like. So, unfortunately, dear viewers, we're going to be stuck here for another four minutes waiting for the game to roll through. I do hope that you'll probably go and get a cup of tea during this time because, frankly, there's not a huge amount left to say. I guess I could just go around again and pretend it didn't happen the first time round. <sighs> Man, what a drag. Eh, what, what's the abbreviated version? Swan Ronsons look like they went out early because they've got a lot of, you know, it's going to take a little while for the X teams to really kind of show their potential. Until Dread and hits level 6, that intervention shutting down the regression isn't going to be an issue. And probably, I imagine that Kale isn't amazing prior to that point as far as her ability to deal with Talon. Uh, in the top lane, again, same sort of thing. Jigred is going to have that ranged advantage over Skiller. Despite the Ignite giving Skiller that laning advantage, I have to think that Jigred's going to probably do fine up in the top lane, if not potentially shut down Skiller's ability to farm. We'll have to see how aggress how good Jigred is at keeping up the aggression without being counter-aggressed on. In the jungle, that's probably the matchup I'm most interested in seeing how it plays out. I imagine both of these junglers are going to be looking to gank a fair amount. Uh, oh, Jack Manak making a bold prediction. Talon all in a, all in level three without realizing that Fizzy is going to be in a bush and first blood at 315 it precisely. That's Jack Manak, a prophet for our time, or merely a charlatan looking to try and troll. Only time will tell. <laughs> then he'll tilt. I I that's if all of those things happen, then you're probably right. Oh, it was, uh, oh, so I see. A thing called love. 
is known by the regular human meatbag name Connor. I resist the urge to go down any kind of John Connor Terminator jokes route because really nobody would want that. We'll have to see. We'll have to keep out on the tilt watch to see if any of these junglers do manage to aggravate the middle or, or any of the lanes into taking unnecessary risks. I have to think that the Swan Ronsons have a bigger opportunity to do that with the Cocoon out of nowhere, allowing for a thing for, called Love to really get that damage in. As to you know, as to how well that's going to work out, we'll have to see. I think Dreadun could potentially be caught off guard and murdered before the intervention can be deployed. But, you know, it's going to require Rich t to be really on point with those cocoons, and they're not the easiest things in the world to hit. Obviously, vastly, vastly easier to do so if the opponent does not see it coming. Alright, less than a minute remains before we go into what's surely going to be not a 15 minute pause because that would be way too much to bear. <sighs> so to round out that roundup, uh, Tamahal and Bacon Asians down the bottom line for the next team, face them against Grizzly, Grizzly Far and Sergeant Squiffy, that's right, Sergeant Squiffy, not SQL Squiffy. And similarly to the top lane, I think Swan Ronsons have a small advantage in that Tamahal is going to take, take a while to get going, and Sergeant Squiffy just I feel has a little bit more utility in the same way uh, on Thresh. Sorry, that Thresh has a little bit more utility, much in the same way that Elise has a little bit more uh, utility over Shinzao. Uh, oh, interesting. A theory about League Games, the team with the most hats will win. Hmm. An interesting theory. I'd like to know kind of what that's, you know, what's the basis, what's the underlying kind of reasoning for that? Is that because hats off confer some kind of hidden bonus in the same sort of way that sunglasses do? Uh, I'm not sure if Project Lonely has that same one, but let's see. I guess it depends on your definition of hats, really. I mean, I guess Kale and Leona have hats, I'd say. Uh, I think Shinzao maybe has a coronet or something? I don't know. It depends if you call it a hat or not. Uh, Gentleman Nart obviously has the hattiest of all the hats. So if we're talking about uh, hats in as terms of who has the most hat-like hat, then certainly a big one in favour of this one nonsense. Into the game, we have yet to see a pause, so we're already, already looking better than we have before. Which is coming out thick, thick and fast. Swan Ronsons have got their items around the base a little bit faster than the X to X team. So they're going to be able to set up those positions early. We'll have to see whether or not either these teams feel like going for that early position. I'm intrigued to see if Rich T Bangers does commit to going for that cocoon. I imagine we're probably going to see the, the skill up held off until it becomes apparent whether or not it's going to be a level 1 fight. And Cocoon obviously very strong at level 1, but it's going to really imp impact. This is ability to jungle. Uh, oh, well, going by the hat theory, the, the, the Swan Ronsons are going to win. And there we go. Don't get too carried away. It is, in fact, going to be a pause. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on there. <laughs> well, as is only justified, the Swan Ronsons this time are uh, the ones to bring out the pause. Accusations being flung wildly around that the that one of the housemates may be enjoying too much in the form of adult entertainment. Let's turn off the chat now and hopefully make this a little bit less terrible to go <laughs> into any kind of permanent media like YouTube. Also, dear YouTube, I'm sorry, these these people do not represent anybody, especially not their own universities. Well, hopefully, patients have been successful 
in the Swan Ronson's household. Game is going to resume very shortly. There we go. We're back into things. Let's get a bit of move on the bottom side. There we go. School board all lined up and lovely. Minions have spawned. Oh, apparently the Twitch chat reckons that Richard sucks. I don't even know who Richard is, but we've got it on good authority that he is not the best player. But whether or not this is true and me or merely a sacrilegious uh, attack on his character or her character, I don't know. We don't know where telling. We'll have to find out. It looks like both teams are going to go for the fairly standard bottom side jungle start, allowing them to get the support from both members of the bottom lane. So far, everything more or less what like you'd expect. Skilla patiently enduring the slings and arrows of outrageous Gnar to try and pick up some pick up some CS for themselves. So far, nothing nothing too too exciting so far. Looks like both Strangler is going to pick up their first buff, make their way up the map. Of course the question becomes, will they, will either of them divert after picking up this first buff for a gank, or will they just continue on? It's perfectly valid, especially for junglers like Elise and uh, particularly Xin Zhao, who have that inbuilt sustain to stay in that jungle for longer and try and push all the way through, get both buffs and pick up the jungle item a little bit faster. Uh, <laughs> I've some insinuations about the quality of tea bags going on in the chat. You can definitely tell we're in England. Still, both neither side looking like they want to fully commit as of yet. We are seeing a pretty fast move up to the red buff for rich tea baggins. Gonna pick that one up first. We might be might be telegraphing at some kind of attempt to get an early gank in with a early red buff. I have to see if that is the case or not. It's still, though, uh, Skiller on Mundo, not quite as hard. There we go, Fizzy comes in. It is 315, exactly as predicted. What is this? The Flash comes out. I think Love is going to go down. First blood goes across the Fizzy. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Jack Minak, you, you monster. But still, the Swan Ronsons are not to be denied. They come back for the return kill. Skiller is going to flash so, so low. And they get the return kill with the assist gold, actually pushing them very slightly into the lead. Yes, Jack Manak, you, you called it exactly. You are really one of the great League of Legends analysis kind of dudes. But still, the return kill may be going to keep a thing called love from going on to We'll have to see. The extra time that Jigra gets in the top lane on the while Rich T Baggins being, being trying to be pushed away from the blue off goes back he's maybe gonna to commit to this one. Fizzy trying to walk away. I don't know if this is the best idea. Flashes! Rich T Baggins so so low and they get the kill. I have to think that Fizzy has missed out maybe on some healing without by trying to run rather than what's attacking, but who am I to say? Very tight fight and good position, uh, good team movement from the Swan Ronsons meant they were able to get the numbers advantage, taking advantage of the teleport on Skiller, meaning that once Skiller gets taken out of lane, it's going to take him a while to get back. So, thus far, Swan Ronsons with the small lead, though we did see, as predicted by Jack Stack, that early first blood going across. I believe it was actually to Fizzy himself. Yet to see anything done about done with that by the extra X team, as they lose out two kills early on, and the gold goes in favour of Swan Monsters. Farming-wise, we're looking pretty even. The big disparity, of course, coming with Skiller up in the top lane. He might be regretting taking that game now. Didn't do him an enormous amount of good. But we'll have to see if they can get into. Quite certainly, you know, it's going to keep Dr. Mundo relevant to the damage threat. But whether or not Jigre can just walk away from any potential engage is going to be interesting for as well. Skiller being it, having bowlers toss right in his noggin. And it's not doing particularly great. I think perhaps he's overestimating Dr. Mundo's ability early on. Back, back. 
is available for parties. Fizzy goes in, nice catch onto Jigred, gets the knock up, and is this going to be the second kill of the game for Fizzy? Nice. Well, I don't know if I said it in pre-game chat, but Fizzy doing a lot of work for the for the X team, keeping them in contention, and swinging back, allowing the skill of that time to recover from that early aggression. Kills are even up. It's still slightly fine. Skiller should be thanking his lucky stars, he has a jungler willing to look out for someone who is already Must be a bit of a dodgy Still work up this time Keep an eye on that middle lane, rich baggins, putting down those wards Making sure it's not going to be a surprise next time because he comes out of the jungle At least the Swan Ronsons are giving the respect that is deserved uh, Skiller, perhaps not quite as much I think he's probably going to get taken down, yep Overstayed up in the top lane, and another kill gives across to the Swan Ronsons. Not ideal. That skiller, I think, perhaps needs to rein it in a little bit. Is picking up some defensive item choices. Got the chain vest and the extra bit of health. So hopefully, it's gonna last just that time. Busy in the jungle notices that somebody is watching him the whole time. But still, very nice play from the Swan Ronsons. You know, multiple wards, making sure they're not going to be caught out. Tamar Hala is getting destroyed. This may be a double kill. Vegas is struggling, struggling out, but has the slows, has the flash. Can they take this further? No T Baggins takes the turret shot and walks it off. Another kill for the Swan Ronsons. Nice team play. Very good gank. Richard Baggins. Both junglers making a really big difference in this game. But thus far. It going it a little bit in favor of the Swan Ronsons. Good catches coming from unusual angles, and we might see the Swan Ronsons turn into a dragon. Uh, up the top lane, this could be what they were waiting for. Skiller gets shoved back, Nar pushes him away, and wow, that was pretty darn close. Skiller, with those stats, much more tacky. See, he's trying to come in on this dragon. It's a little bit dicey. The vision is not there for the X team, though. Dragon goes to the Swan Ronsons with no answer whatsoever from the X team. Still, we are seeing recalls coming out for the Swan Ronsons bottom side as to whether or not they can do anything with this. Uh, or at least it's going, to be the X, it's going to give the X team bottom lane a little bit of breathing space get, to get a few more CS down, just keep building towards what presumably is going to be a lane. Okay. There's a recalling the middle lane. Looks like we're not going to see another one of those 315 gangs. Uh, <laughs> I'm still a little bit lost with the uh, the comments about tea bags, but I trust they they make it they are entirely sensical and not just random words. Uh, Rich tea biscuits often a divisive force between many in England. Of course, unfortunately, much as stereotyped, a cup of tea is an important part of many people's lives. Anywho, keep an eye on the bottom lane. Everything looks more or less as you'd expect. Pretty even between these two teams, with the even with the death on Tamahala, able to keep up with the with the CS, so far at least, even with the range disadvantage. Still a BF sword in the pocket of Grizzly Park. That's a terrible thing to say. PG Tips Master Race. That's uh... It's certainly an issue that a lot of people take to their brand of teabag. But anywho. It seems like for the time being, Grizzly Fart has the advantage. Got the BF sword has just the raw damage, helping presumably winning the jewels. But at the same point, the build will cut us for Tamahala, giving that extra bit of utility. It's either slow to pursue or slow to get away. And of course, don't forget that Dreadon has got that level six, has got that intervention. So I think with Love, it's going to have a lot tougher of a time to be able to do anything about this. But what's this? In the middle lane, I thought for a second we might see Fizzy coming in, but Fizzy detained unavoidably by that pink ward. Good warning so far. Oh my gosh, Richie Biscuit. Uh, Richie Baggins, even. Uh, 
catches out Fizzy, and the response, a little too slow from Draydon, wasn't able to help out Fizzy. So what looked like a potentially a very bad situation was turned into a good one. Richie Baggins being pursued. Who misses the flash? The shutdown goal going across. Draydon doesn't... doesn't oh wow, drops a really late intervention. And it's going to pay for it. Ugh, I do... Yeah, a very common... I mean, I feel a little bit bad to say, say a common mistake, but a very common thing to have happen for for Kale's uh, Kale players is dropping into it very late, and thereby is making sure that the intervention's over. You die. As opposed to dropping it earlier and having some health to fall back on. So Fizzy comes into the middle lane. Is he going to pursue a single love? He, this. this could be bad times. Is Fizzy realise what's going on? Think of love being smited and slowed. Can Fizzy close the distance? Baked nations coming in from the side. Oh, lovely, lovely catch. Fizzy doesn't look like he's fully on board with this, though. The kill goes across the bacon and Asians. Jigger it there. Fizzy, it's gonna. possibly gonna be proven right in his initial assertion that this was not a good idea. As the fight is turned that middle lane. And. A little bit of miscommunication, perhaps, with the X team. Not fully able to decide which way they were going, and ended up paying the price for it. As they, while they did get the kill, they ended up giving over two with assist gold for it, and so really not making it worthwhile at all. Still, 12 minutes, nearly come, nearly. It's not a huge gold disparity, but it does kind of speak to some mistakes that have been made on the part of the X team thus far. We'll have to see whether or not the uh, the scaling of the X team going on for them is going to be enough. Richie Baggins coming in up in the top lane to keep Skiller alive. Blue buff being given across in the middle to the Dread in the middle lane. We'll see a few more interventions coming up because of that. And both jung both teams junglers lurking around that top lane, looking to see if they can get anything, but for the time being, gonna fall back. It's worth noting we do see the completed Nash's tooth for Dread. Presumably only gonna be a matter of time before we see uh, a further pickup. That's something to rage play, which is a very strong item at the moment. Well, there's a lot of different options build wise, so we'll have to see how that one pans out. It's possible that Red Dunga got a defensive item choice. Perhaps well, Zonia's to try and double down on the whole you can't ever burst me. We might well see a jungler fight breaking out here. T Baggins maybe has gone a little too far here. Has got a speed boost. Jumps over the head of Dread and is able to scuffle away on those eight legs, so a little bit of extra movement at speed. Getting the distance Rich T Baggins needs to be able to get away from what. The ever wise Jack Misak in the Twitch chat claiming that the hats are being crucial to how this game progresses, and it could well be right. Science has yet to come to a definitive answer on this question of whether or not hats are the deciding factor in League of Legends games. Tamahala does get caught out recalling in that bush with a good ward placement from the... S I really want to call him Sergeant Squid, but uh, I'll only go halfway. Sergeant Squiffy. Does, you know, doesn't seem to be living the names thus far. Pretty well. A goodly amount of assists and hasn't died of yet. Bacon and Asians left the bottom lane without his AD carry to try and keep too much to see us from being lost. But it looks like we're seeing the Swan Rons with the second dragon of the game. And again, it doesn't look like the XD could do too much about it as Jigre picks up the kill from themselves up the top lane. It's great for the X team as they can just bleed away little advantages over time. Second dragon prepared to get that power down. A little bit faster if that was ever going to be an issue. Still, a reset in the bottom lane. AD carry back in position, able to duke it out again. We do see Rich T Baggins in the appropriate side jungle, potentially ready to come in and try and lead a bit. Tamahala, 
uh, back in wave. If Bacon Nation takes that one right in the face, the flash across, Sponge and Scriffy push right into the wall, the counteraction, the heal comes down, Tamahala has to flash away. The gauge didn't go quite the way it wanted, and Fizzy ends up stunning up for nothing. Tamahala got chunked pretty darn hard, even with the Blade of the Ruin King there. Still, it's not all bad news as Skiller manages to catch his his prey with a cord. Still, Skiller has dropped three deaths already this game. He might be getting a little bit of help from his Panzer. Yeah, does get the double bounce. The Dread and are they going to be able to come in? The slow does connect the cleaver, catches Jigger right in the back. He's stunned. Quite get the done. Good Nar ultimate. Flash has to be burned, and Dreadon doesn't quite have got that we were looking for, but still, it's a small window of opportunity. Fizzy a little late, but still, presence I'm sure more than appreciated. As we move towards the 20 minute mark, we are seeing a pretty significant goal gap opening up. The Swan Ronson's 5k, well, nearly 5k goal ahead. With those three turrets and two dragons. It does seem to be the death of a thousand cuts for the exit of the team. And I guess we'll just have to see if they're able to turn this one around, if they're able to catch out the right targets. It seems like the Swan Ronsons are doing all the right things to make sure that doesn't happen though, with good vision being dropped around the place, with those new new and improved, cheaper pin cords being used to great effect to keep their vision open. Uh, and of course, as I say this, I realise that the pink balls haven't been renewed soon. But still, earlier on they were definitely doing it, I swear. Still, as time goes on, well, say nearly everybody's, inbuilt warding trinket comes more effective, so they're going to be able to put down more wards themselves. Still, doesn't really compare with a, a full on sight zone as far as uh, longevity and immediate access. Oh. It's worth having a, a brief look through what items these guys are taking. Or maybe it's not. Rich T. Baggins runs into trouble. Didn't realize he was about to receive a visit from the Dread and Fairy. T. Baggins gets shut down. Jigred could be next. The Cleaver does connect. Might, might see continued aggression. But a little too far, my little fella. Has his Mercury Treads. So it's very, very hard to keep down for any amount of time. Skiller seems to be doubling all on the side. On the side has that uh, has the Sunfire Cloak, so it's going to keep doing damage even other even without specifically doing any damage himself. Just looking enough fizzy going for the Warrior Enchantment, looking to try and get that early power. <laughs> Grizzle Spot, apparently a, uh, a vector for Pink Eye. Uh, Jig Red picks up another seemingly effortless kill. It's like a day for Skiller, who just doesn't seem to be able to quite get the read on Jig Red as far as how much damage is able to happen. Looking, looking for the opportunity to come in, and there it is. Knock up. Can Jigrid get away is the question. The Smite stealing some of that movement speed. Fizzy uh, surprisingly falling back. Maybe he noticed that there was a missing mid laner. Didn't want to risk having running a foul of the extra aggression. I think or love might be able to run about be able to run into red. There we go. The er slightly earlier intervention this time. Uh, oh my gosh, Fizzy gets caught with the tail of that bang. Pretty unlucky to run right into that one. A bit of a timing issue. Isn't able to just close the distance, which we need to do to get that extra kill off. Still, the fight remains for the extra X team. Skiller desperately trying to keep up with Jigred. Those tier 1 boots are just not going to do the job. Cleaver's not quite connecting. Jigred! <laughs> Jigred, what are you doing? Shut down. That's a chunk of gold going across the X team. And suddenly, well, the goal gap has not 
close, but that's not an insignificant amount of gold that's going across. I'm just going to check the chat log actually to see how much that was since. That's right, 350 going across the entire team. Matt, that's certainly going to help any of the lower income guys for the XT. Get something slack. Look, well, it looks like the most of the gold disparity is coming in terms of a very, very strong Drigrid who has a lot of gold in their pocket. Don't let an AD carry for the spots, the bright spots as far as money goes. And as might have been expected, uh, in the middle lane, and with the ultimate, able to counteract a lot of what the thing called Love is able to do, forcing them to go for a more roaming playstyle. As the first turret of the game goes down for the extra X team, and the dragon is next on the menu. Both these teams, Kale, Adred, and picking up that Gwinsu's Rage Blade, a huge, huge item. Again, Skiller running into trouble, really needs to have some way to avoid this happening again and again. But as it, as it, it looks like that's going to be a, pretty much a foregone conclusion. But the teams are going to clash around the dragon. We do see them sneaky, sneaky, sneaky in. Lovely. Can they but love getting caught out. The teleport comes in though. This is going to be a number six advantage for the X team. This could be a massacre. The kills are being traded backwards and forwards. But there's no way the X team are going to win this fight with the numbers. Oh. Skiller. What's at the side of that one? I do have a bit of a number sponge, we'll have to go back and take a quick look. As the dragon goes across, hop back, run through that pipe. So, no, actually, whooped all the way down. So, lovely catch here. The X, the X is being aware. The top lane was not into me with no teleport. The pipe just went exactly as you might imagine. It's. The X team do have to bear in mind. <laughs> uh, the X team do have to bear in mind that they are still behind you. One or two good fights. They can't really afford to take uh, take straight fights like that. But maybe if Skiller had been there, the, the result may have been different. Still, speaking of Skiller, we do see the second completed item, Dead Man's Plate, coming out. Still no tier 2 boots, but the Dead Man's Plate will make up that stem. Item wise, of course, a Jig Red, we're seeing the Black Clee, which is going to really help cut through a lot of that armor of Skiller, and it might go to explain why this has been such a hard time. But the extra movement speed is going to be so, so hard to deny, without any kind of slow resistance. I can't remember. Boots of three. They're picked so little. Oh, I actually follow these. Uh, boots of swiftness, I think. Sorry, the, the names are kind of similar to each other. This is. Oh, this is Catcher. I apologize. Oh, yeah, a, a fight breaks down the top lane. Skiller gets rammed into the wall. Multiple stuns coming down. The fight seems to be going in the favour of the X team so far, but they look like they want to disengage. The, the engage is there. The intervention was not dropped exactly as what was talked about before the game. There was no chance for Dreadon to drop the intervention because they died while stunned. That's always been the risk if you can't react fast enough. So we see the Swan Monsters coming in, pushing. It's going to at least be a turret. In the bottom side, we see Tamahala happily farming away, but this could be a disastrous for the X team. They really, really need to bring back their AD right now. This could be the end of the game. Skiller gets demolished. This is incredible. Man. For the X team, they drop another turret. This could be an inhibitor as well. Tamahala, well. Certainly nowhere near. And, wow. Let's catch up with as close to live as we're going to get. Because I don't imagine anything new is going to happen since then. Yep, it looks like we've seen Swan Monsters taking it on, getting that Baron and pushing the gold lead even further. It is 5k gold now. It's surely extended. Heroic effort from Fizzy. He gets intervention. He's best to get the No, lovely repel. X team. Go. Scars. It's a mistake. A thing called love. 
doesn't even go down, that's going to be a good game. X team, they tried so hard, etc. Well, it's going to be if X team are... Congratulations to the Swan Ronsons. Very well played. X team just not quite able to cap to keep up. And the small disadvantages snowball into a fairly com comprehensive victory for the Swan Ronsons. Whew. Uh, and yes, of course, Jack Minak, you must remember, as always, hats. It was truly the the fact that we did not have a Dr. Munda in a hat, which I don't even think is a thing, that really cost the X team this victory. Not enough hats, not enough wins. Alright, well that will be it for now. I hope there'll be a another game for the X, the X team this evening but I guess it'll be the last the last we see of the Swan Ronsons or hopefully hopefully will not be the last we'll see of the Swan Ronsons but probably probably for a while at least it's so it's been lovely casting with you guys and uh, you know make sure to keep 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 memeing because if you don't who will yes Jack Minak let's be friends Forever! Maximum friendship, sorry. <laughs> Alright guys, well hopefully uh, there'll be another cast a little later on this evening with the X team second game, if that is going to be a thing. I'll have to find that out fairly shortly. Uh, so, if you like if you like listening to people ramble nonsense, uh, please feel more than free to give me a follow. I will stick this up on YouTube at some point. Uh, don't worry, Jack Manak. I'll find room for you at the bottom of the pile. Bottom of the pile. But that's going to be it for now. Uh, but yes, at some point this will go up on YouTube. I don't know how the... I'm going to get this to you guys. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll pass the YouTube link to Jack Manak, and they can pass it along to the Swan Ronsons. Uh, if that's acceptable. But yeah, guys, have a lovely evening, and good luck with our future matches. Toodaloo!